You are listening to the We Need to Talk About Oscar podcast, and this is our interview with the sympathizer editor, Vikash Patel. We have this forming tradition where we ask our guests at the start of our interviews about their core memories that made them fall in love with films or decide on becoming a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Do you have such a moment or period in your life which you can recall? Sure, it was interesting. You know, I mean, I hand on my heart. I don't think I grew up wanting to be a film editor, you know, or didn't even know what a film editor would was, you know. I didn't really didn't really gravitate towards film and TV. I was always into sports. So as a, a child and then growing up as being, being a teenager, I really just wanted to be an athlete and I really wanted to be a professional cricket player. That was my that was my thing back in England. But I also love the arts. My two favorite things at school were sports and the arts. So when, you know, the, the professional world of cricket didn't ha- kind of happen, I then segued into my other love and passion, which was the arts. And, you know, I went to fine art school, then went to study film, video and animation at University of Newcastle. And that's where I discovered editing. And specifically, I discovered that there were these two systems behind closed doors, which were an Avid Express, and nobody knew how to use them. So I asked the professor, I'm like, what is that? And they're like, oh, that's like nonlinear editing, but there's nobody who knows how to use them. Here's the manual. And I spent six weeks and taught myself how to use Avid Express back in, you know, in the late 90s. And then I was the guy that every student came and he was like, hey, can you edit this film? Can you edit this for us? And, you know, I became that person. And, um, you know, from there, once I learned how to use the system, in my second year at university, I did this two-week internship at a professional post-production facility. And after day one at that post-production facility, the owner of the company said, hey, do you want to come back tomorrow and we'll pay you to work on projects? Brexit history. So that's how my career started back in the late 90s, you know, just taught myself how to use this system and, you know, started mainly cutting documentaries and commercials and music videos back in England and then segued into more narrative stuff. Wonderful. And now you're here. Obviously, we can't leave out the fact that you worked on this project with Park Chan-wook. We'll get into it more, but uh, to start us off, how was this experience for you just in general i mean i've been a you know admirer of director park's work for the last two decades you know ever since i saw old boy just a master master filmmaker that i've admired you know aesthetically tonally his projects his movies you know there's a specific specific park chan wood tone you know and i love that and 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 a sensibility so and it was true i i Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my collaboration with Director Park. We spoke the same language, you know, in terms of cinematic language and filmmaking. We both have the same taste and taste levels and aesthetic. And that was evident since basically from day one, you know. I mean, um, ever since I showed him my first cut of episode two, which was the first episode that I worked with him on because the pilot was shot last. From the first time I screened my editor's cut, he was happy, I was happy, we were on the same page, and uh, it was a joy to work with him. And just to learn from him as well, just a master filmmaker, and truly a collaborator. He demands your opinion. He, you know, it's not, you're not a pair of hands. You are somebody he trusts intimately, and he wants to hear your thoughts and ideas. He still may not run with them, or he may run with a hybrid version of it or sometimes you're like yes because i love that let's let's do that or let's do this and but it's it's a back and forth and it's it was a true true collaboration it was uh very fulfilling and rewarding for me actually in the last couple of days i started listening to 
the official Sympathizer podcast where co-showrunner, writer, director Don McKellar speaks about how director Park appreciates great ideas by taking it one step further, kind of. And also Robert Downey Jr. mentions how when the Korean author gives notes, it's uh, not restraining, but rather helps expand the performance, the scene. Is your experience like that? Yeah, yes. I will say in in a different way, yes. My experience was like that. You know, sometimes he, sometimes director Park will be like, you know, Vic, something's just not... I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with this transition. Or I'm not happy with, you know... This was my late least favorite scene that I directed because we were rushed for time. Is there can is there anything you can come up with ideas, you know, and then show me and you know, and sometimes it'd be two or three versions or you know, so yes, he he loves to loves to explore, which I do too. So it's great. You know, there's the a good example is the opening of episode two on the tarmac as they try, flee Saigon and they come to America. Aaron, I I can't. I don't know how many versions of that scene we cut. Different ways into cutting it. Different different needle drops. Then score back to needle drops. Easily fifty different options, you know. But we just kept playing and playing with it until you see the final version, you know. So it was a process, and that's director Park's process as well. Ultimately, I don't know if he's ever happy because he just loves to explore. Now that you've mentioned the transitions themselves, among other trademarks, director Park is well known for his legendary transitions. You are, of course, quite experienced, but was there anything that you learned in this part of your craft while working with him? Or rather, were there any techniques or simply something, I don't know, delicious that was truly fascinating and you could try? Yes, there's, I mean, there's always room to try with Director Park. There's no, as I said earlier, you know, he will love to tweak and tweak and explore, you know, and and it's funny you mentioned transitions. There are transitions that are really, really designed by him, but he's always looking, and I mean always looking, to see if he can find other transitions, <laughs> All always, you know, and it's like, even stuff he's not designed, it's like, okay, can we, like, let's see if there's something cool that we can do here, you know, and do a match cut or do, you know, connect the dots from one thing to another, you know. And in the pilot, there's a good example where the the convoy, the journey leaving Saigon before they get to the airport base and they go through the, the final drive through Saigon and we go over, the bus goes over a soldier's hat and then we make the cut to the the dead soldier's hat that was we did that in editorial we that was never designed and we came up with that you know so it's like finding little gems like that it's but it's always we're always thinking about the transitions we're always thinking about elevating the filmmaking you know let's say it's just not it's not just transition visual transitions it's also audio transitions it's also just the whole aesthetic of it like oh can we do something fun with audio here can we do something with fun with music just dropping the music out etc cetera, etc cetera. or sucking all the sound out so it, it's it's the whole picture i haven't even thought of that amazing <laughs> yes yes by the way have you actually read the novel the limited series is based on i i deliberately didn't read the novel i don't you know my and, and I've been in this position before where I've been, you know, approached about cutting a, a series based off a normal, novel, et cetera. You know, and I, like, I was very curious, should I read it or not? And I, I deliberately didn't read it because I don't want to be like my novel and my Bible is the scripts. That's my, ultimately, that's my quote unquote North Star. That's all I'm working from. So I need to. There's no point having additional knowledge when really this is what I have, you know. But both my assistants, Julian and Victoria, they they I you know they were intimately aware of the novel. So if I ever question something, you know, Julian would be like, "Yeah, that happened," or "That line is, you know, something very close to that happens in the novel." I'm like, "Great, so we're on point here," you know. So I was definitely mindful of being respectful to the to the text from the novel or to the sentiment but really my um you know my north star were, were, were the scripts and then obviously my conversations with director park and 
with Don as well because we, it was a it was a team effort. I mean, it was a lot of work and spent almost eighteen months working on the series. Absolutely. And pacing wise, were there any talks about this segment of the source material and adapting it to the series? Not really. I mean, you know, um, I think there's a, just a natural pace that comes from some of the back and forth with the dialogue and how the scenes and how director Park directs. He's very mindful of pace. He's very mindful of the show length, et cetera, per episode. So he's very, very lean and efficient with his filmmaking too. So he, you know, he's not the kind of director who's going to shoot, say, 15 setups in a scene. That's just never going to happen. He will shoot minimal setups, but he will work those setups. Like he internally, he'll pace the actors and the blocking will have this internal rhythm, which then just dictates pace from scene to scene. And some scenes, as you'll see, some scenes we cut out of the scene extremely quickly. Some scenes we linger, which then has its own pace, you know, and momentum as well. And, uh, you know, we were looking for that. We're always looking to get, you know, just to heighten moments by just abruptly cutting. And then, you know, then you get the you get the fallout on the back end. And a good example in the pilot is the tarmac sequence, you know, where on the captain's place, it's all chaotic. Is he going to make the plane? He's just seen. Lynn and Duke dead, and then we hard cut from his face to his face in the re-education camp, and we absorb the feeling and the memory in the re- re-education camp, and we abruptly cut. That that I, that gives you that chokes you up in many ways. And I remember, I remember watching it at the premiere a few months ago on the big screen, and I actually physically, I I, I actually got choked up because I haven't seen it, you know, in a while. And then when you w- witness that and you watch it, you're like, oh, that was very effective. Also, there are quite a lot of time jumps in the sympathizer, however, not so quickly or sticking with the pace, not so fast paced. And as the editor of the first two episodes, among your responsibilities was the introduction of the characters just coming in and coming in and the smooth yet articular inclusion of them, these incoming new characters. How did you tackle this? Yeah, so some of those, you know, some of those were on the page, but on the page it was, you know, oh, the camera rewinds back. So it was fun to create those actual rewind effects. So it's a, it's a story within a story. If you pay, if you were to scroll through them, you're getting snippets of what's coming later. You get you get a sense because I deliberately created those so you catch specific moments and each one is different pace some of them are some of them are for example four frames long each the little segments some of those are you know three frames long and some of them are much longer so you really see like if you pay attention like wait what's that you see like in for example episode two is a good example you see the general hat fly off as he's running to the the latrine or in the rewind you actually see it go on you know from it flying so then when you come to that moment, you're like, oh, that was in the rewind effect. So, you know, it was fun to play with because it was broad on the page, the camera rewinds, et cetera. And so I had I had a lot of fun creating those. And, you know, Director Park just kind of let me run with that. Um, and he liked the aesthetic. I think I initially did them with freeze frames. I did all the rewinds with freeze frames. And he's like, no, let's do them with, let's have them moving, but at a specific speed. So then we played with them, you know, and um, that was fun. But in terms of intro- introducing characters, they, you know, the characters are introduced very cleverly the way they blocked by Director Park and how, and they were, the way they were written by Director Park and Don. You know, in the first 10 minutes, I mean, you get introduced to the captain, you get you get a sliver of the commandant in the little box, you know, and you, so you know he's telling the story to him or you'll reveal that. You get Claude, which is amazing, outside the cinema, and then you get the general... But then you get the Crapulent Major and all the rest of them, you know? I mean, but it's all designed via camera and camera moves and through the character as well. And that's testament to, you know, Director Park. I just feel like he's, you know, it, he shines a light on it in a very sophisticated way. It's just like it's all very embedded into the story and designed with the camera work too. We are recording this on a Wednesday. Um, so... 
we are only a couple days away from when episode five, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last one you edited airs. Correct. Correct. What would be your one advice to the weeks boarding this project that would last 18 months for him? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a very good question. You know, um, my advice was probably make sure I get a lot of sleep, you know, <laughs> um, because, you know, something that was challenging was we, after Director Park did the pilot episode, we worked remotely. Um, so we worked together for about six months from end of October through till, well, end of October through till early March. And then he went off to Asia to shoot the pilot. And then he went to South Korea. And then we worked remotely from South Korea all the way through till mid-January, which meant that we would start our days at 4 p.m., 5 p.m. LA time, which would be 9 a.m. Korea time. So I would work, you know, and also Jin, the other editor, we would work um, when we would work with Director Park from, you know, before daylight savings, it would be 5 p.m. till anywhere from around 10, 10 30 till one o'clock in the morning for Monday through Thursday, you know. Uh, and that just that just requires some level of stamina and your brain doesn't operate at that same level late at night. So it was something new that I hadn't done before, which was uh you know, exhausting and challenging, also fun in many ways, but definitely uh, sleep uh, deprived. <laughs> One other thing I forgot to ask was about the language barriers working together. How did that work? It was really, it was pretty, as I said earlier on, you know, at the start of the interview, we, um, Director Parker and I definitely just immediately on the same page, same filmmaking, sensibilities, taste, aesthetic. And then, but the communication, so to your question, I had a translator. We had a translator on the show, Jahan, and on the sessions when I worked with Director Park, Jahan would be next to me. Um, so we would, you know, he would be there, but and then he would translate and articulate my thoughts back to Director Park and vice versa. But Director Park understands a lot of English. He's he just, you know, he will use a translator to kind of articulate his thoughts and then pass that along to me. So it was a back and forth. It was always the three of us and Director Park, creative producer, Jahe. So on a on an evening session working together, there'll be the four of us on the in the room like that working together, you know. And Jahan will be my translator. Um and he was brilliant. He was he was truly fantastic but most times director park like yes vix i get it just you know and i'm already doing what director park wants me to do before the translation even happens because we're in sync in terms of our filmmaking language the chemistry Wonderful. yeah yeah i guess you know sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't you know but the chemistry was there for sure and we just got on really really well you know and i'm very proud to call him my friend and yeah he's a wonderful human being now that your most recent project is just getting released as a final question, but a rather general one, where can we see your work next time? I'm about to start a project with Jason Bateman again. I worked with Jason on Ozark for all four seasons. So um, I'm about to start this project called Black Rabbit with Jason starring and directing um, with Jude Law. So it's an eight episode limited series. And um, it, yeah, I, it'll be on Netflix sometime next year, I believe, you know, but we're just about to, to, to begin. So I've literally printed out the scripts and here I go, you know. <laughs> the perfect reason to catch up for <laughs> a year from now. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah, please, please, you know, please reach out in a year from now. And hopefully I'm done with the project, you know, by then. Um, but if I'm not, then I will, you know, give you some juicy intel on the project. Absolutely. We can do a little behind the scenes look. Exactly. In progress. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Wix, thank you so much for taking the time. And thanks for these amazing insights into this wonderful show. So thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate it. <laughs>